A crisis in Nepal, turmoil in Sri Lanka. What about Pakistan? Well, Pakistan has a new government, but the same old problems. The biggest one being terror. On Tuesday afternoon, there was an attack in Karachi, the financial capital of Pakistan. The targets were Chinese nationals. The attackers were Baloch insurgents. And for the record, this was the third attack on Chinese citizens in just one year and one of the many attacks in the recent past. In June 2020, the Karachi Stock Exchange was attacked. The target was Chinese companies. They partly own the stock exchange. In October 2020, the Gwadar port was attacked. Same targets, Chinese projects. In April 2021, there was an attack in Quetta. The target was the Chinese ambassador. Fortunately, he was not present there. And in June 2021, there was another attack aimed at China. This time, nine Chinese engineers were killed in a blast. Tuesday saw another attack, and this latest one was no different. Three Chinese nationals were killed, plus one Pakistani. Islamabad has launched a probe. China has issued a condemnation. The hunt for culprits has begun, and so has a debate. A debate on how this attack could derail bilateral ties. And I will not get into that. Pakistan, for all practical purposes, is a vassal state of China, so the relationship is pretty one-sided, and Pakistan is China's to dump. What I want to focus on tonight is where this attack unfolded, the Confucius Institute at the University of Karachi. It is named after the great Chinese philosopher Confucius. I'm sure some of you have heard of him. He was a Chinese sage who lived 2,500 years ago. His principles of wisdom became China's handbook on, on governance. For centuries, Chinese civil servants had to pass exams based on Confucian texts. But in the 1960s, this trend came to an end. Mao Zedong was in charge, Confucius fell out of favor, his preachings were banned in China, his texts were burned, his relics defaced, Mao promoted Marxism instead. Many decades later, Confucius was revived. It was Xi Jinping's pet project. In 2012, after coming to power, Xi Jinping took special interest in Confucianism. He started referring to it in his speeches. He used them to bolster his own standing in China, also abroad. The president of China directed special funds to expand Confucius Institutes the world over. The aim was to use them as a soft power tool to promote Chinese values, culture, and language, or so they said. As of today, there are more than 530 Confucius Institutes in dozens of countries across six continents with 100 million students and counting. Beijing spends $10 billion every year on them and plan to establish 1,000 such institutes by 2020. We do not know how that plan is going. But what are they spending this kind of money for? In the words of Xi Jinping, the aim is to tell Chinese stories well and spread Chinese voices well. Well, it was going as per plan until the plot had a twist. The world saw these institutes for what they were, China's Trojan horse, a tool to spread propaganda, undermine academic freedom, engage in military espionage, spy on overseas Chinese students, and advance the CCP's political agenda. I could give you examples. In a 2017 report by the Wilson Center, Chinese students studying in the US claimed to be victims of monitoring, and they accused faculty members at Confucius Institutes. They said they kept an eye on their day-to-day -day activities. In November 2018, Australia's Victoria University was forced to cancel the screening of a film on China. The objection was made by the university's own Confucius Institute. In December 2019, a university in Belgium shut down this institute over allegations of spying. A professor at this institute was found involved in espionage for China. In January 2020, the University of Maryland shut down a Confucius Institute. It found that Beijing was trying to politically influence academics. And these were just a few examples. I have many more, but you get the point. These institutes try to push China's agenda. They restrict discussions or activities on issues that are against China. The attack on the Confucius Institute in Karachi may have been, different, may have been driven by different reasons. It may have been aimed at hurting China's interests in Pakistan. But what it has revealed is also why Pakistan is so beholden to China. Yes, it's about money, but it's also about the propaganda. There are more than six Confucius Institutes in Pakistan preaching, promoting, and disseminating Chinese propaganda. And we must note here that these institutes are in India as well, four of them. And last we checked, the government of India had decided to review their operations.
We'll keep you posted on where this goes. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.